Well, of course, uh, the big question is uh, when the supply has dropped so much, then we have to actually decrease the demand uh, in order to comply. Otherwise, we just pay huge amounts of money out of our budgets to cover the gap. So we have to have uh, uh, solutions that work for long term. But of course, right now, everybody is suffering due to the high energy prices and we have to have a common solution uh, to that. Otherwise, those countries who have much uh, more money in their budgets just outpay the others and that's detrimental to the internal market. Well, uh, probably we are going to discuss that uh, today as well, but uh, the question is that we just pay a huge amount of money out of our budgets uh, uh, so that uh, those countries that have much more money will outpay the others, but it will not solve the problem that we have. Uh, we uh, uh, we have a solution, or, or what we have been discussing is the common uh, gas uh, purchases uh, regarding the LNG, uh, for example, to get um, cheaper gas uh, from uh, around the world so that we don't uh, compete with each other. Uh, but let's see uh, what kind of solutions there can be more. And I think uh, we all have to talk about uh, uh, decreasing the demand as well. If we just pay the gap and say that the nothing has happened, uh, although we have less supply on the market, then we just uh, don't uh, survive, uh, survive the winter. Uh, the nuclear threats, of course, are very serious and should be taken uh, very seriously, but uh, everybody uh, is agreeing to this, that if nuclear weapons are used, then uh, this is a whole new level and nobody can win a nuclear war. This is very, very clear. And I understand that uh, those messages have been given to uh, Putin and Kremlin as well, that you can't, uh, can't win this war. Um, we uh, have been very united and I, I, of course uh, here uh, everybody has the same problem so that we are not fighting each other but we have a common enemy outside and we should uh, stick to that and that's why I also think that uh, different uh, packages where we outcompete each other are not uh, good for the overall unity. Um, we uh, are su supporting the price cap if it doesn't uh, hinder the security of supply because uh, if we are on the market, in the world market, uh, competing for the LNG for example, if uh, our region has a price cap and the other regions don't have a price cap, then uh, we will just be uh, out, of, out of gas because nobody uh, sells us uh, the gas. And that's why the security of supply is the most uh, important thing. Uh, together with the with the price cap, so that it would function this way, that we don't uh, put this uh, under the risk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, I would uh, much more worry about the sufferings of Ukrainians uh, than uh, those fleeing uh, from Russia right now. But what we have to understand is that we are in a hybrid war with Russia as well, which means that uh, they are using different uh, elements uh, as a weapon towards us. Energy, we already see. Migration is the next weapon. So if there is a migration coming from Russia, uh, then uh, those people tend to go to regions that already have a Russian minority. And in Estonia in 1922, we had a Russian minority of 3.2%. In the end of the occupation, it was over 30. And um, if those people come to those regions and there are two small member states, Estonia and Latvia, then uh, the minority just grows and Russia says we have to liberate them. So it is all part of the bigger imperialistic picture and I would be very, very cautious regarding this and focus on energy, our energy on helping Ukraine to win this war. Thank you.
security and peace. How would you evaluate this discussion and what have the conclusions? It was a very open discussion. Uh, I think it's uh, it's very good format. Actually, we were 10 around the table, so we could very openly discuss these issues. Uh, what was important that uh, the uh, Russian aggression has to be pushed back, but of course uh, there were different views how to do it. Um, I think uh, the overall understanding uh, was still the same and, and this was a fruitful discussion to hear the views around the European political community really. It is under investigation uh, right now, so, so Sweden and, and Denmark are investigating this, uh, so I would not uh, run ahead of them. Uh, I think it was a good meeting because uh, really uh, the countries that are not members of European Union, not members of NATO, uh, but geographically in uh, Europe uh, gather around uh, one one table and and uh, the tensions that we have in Western Balkans, the countries were all, all here, uh, the tensions we have in Azerbaijan, Armenia, they were sitting uh, around the same table. So, so I think this is already a positive outcome. Plus, we discussed the issues that we could do together. Um, um, for example, uh, security of uh, critical infrastructure, uh, common worries that we have, cyber warfare, such things that we can share information and, and, and be stronger together. Um, of course, uh, it is uh, China is, is one of our uh, how we say uh, competitive rivals uh, in the world comp uh, considering the region so uh, so we have been uh, having uh, trade relations with uh, with china right now our energy and and uh, we are concentrated on the uh, russian aggression uh, in Ukraine, so we have uh, big worries, but uh, I guess that we have to have one fight at the time and, and not to, um, uh, to have good relations with uh, other regions as much as possible. Okay, thank you.